welcome to the IBM Cloud App Management Series. My name is Mark Leftwich and I work for IBM SWAT Best Practice Team. Today I'm going to show you the required pre-installation steps that you will need to follow to install IBM Cloud Private. ICAM needs to be installed on a container-based platform such as IBM Cloud Private or Red Hat OpenShift. Today I'm going to focus on the IBM Cloud Private side. I have broken down the installation of IBM Cloud Private into three videos. This video will cover the installation, how to locate the images, load the images into Docker, configuring the host files, and also adding the SSH key to the configuration. The second video, I'm gonna do a specific video on the cluster configuration and the YAML files, which needs to be done before you deploy. And finally, the last video will be focused on the deployment itself. So if you're following the process step-by-step, step, you'll need to watch all three videos to see the complete process. The first step is to locate the install media. The leftmost column of this table shows you all the different operating systems which IBM Cloud Private can be installed on. The rightmost column of the table shows you the part number that you will need to place into the Passport Advantage website to download the corresponding media. I have already downloaded the media which I require for my Red Hat install which you can see on screen now. The first step is to unarchive your install media and load it into the Docker registry. The command I'm placing on screen now will do this for you in one step. Once you've executed the command, there'll be no prompts on screen for a few minutes. If you wish to check the progress of what's happening in the background, you can use the top command and monitor the gzip process's status. Once the unarchiving process completes, you'll start to see the Docker images being loaded into the registry on screen. Again, this does take a little while depending on your hardware, so I'm going to speed the video up. Our next step is to create the installation directory. I'm going to use the standard directory structure. We then need to change into the directory we have just created. The next step required is to extract the configuration files so they can be configured before deployment. I will place the command you need to run on screen now. Next, we need to create an image directory as part of the structure we just created. Again, I will place the command you need on screen now. We are now going to move our original installation media into the images directory we just created. Again, here is the command you need. The command I'm using does assume that my installation media is in slash downloads to begin with. You will need to change this to wherever you've downloaded your installation media. One of the prereqs when you're installing a cluster is you need to have an SSH key on each node in that cluster so it can use passwordless authentication. If you have not done this already, I will add a link to the description below that will show you how to do this. The first command which I'll paste on the screen is to change directory to your IBM Cloud Private directory. The next command on screen is to actually copy that key into the correct folder structure for deployment. In this example, the id underscore rsa is the location and the private key. Our final step in this video is to configure the ICP host file. Again, if you run the command I'm pasting on screen now, it will take you into the cluster directory for your deployment. You will then need to via the host file in that directory so that you can edit the contents. Before we edit the host file, you need to have an understanding of your cluster's architecture. On screen now, you can see how I've set up my proof of concept environment. I have one master node, three worker nodes, and one management node. I do not have a boot node, so I'm using my master node as the boot node. If we now jump back to the host files, you can see the relation between the architectural diagram I just showed you and this file. What we have to do is work through one by one, adding each of the component's IP addresses against the individual node's purpose. I'm first adding my master IP address under the master section. When I showed you the previous architectural diagram, I'm also using my master node as the proxy node. So I'm going to give that the same IP. This file's purpose is purely to ensure the distributed function goes to the correct node. Next on the list is the worker nodes. You've noticed from my diagram that I had three worker nodes. So I'm going to place them one after the other, all under the worker load address. You need to ensure there's no spaces between them.
Finally, we're going to update the management node. So I'm going to remove the IP, including the hash, and place the correct one in. I'm also going to remove the hash in front of the management node. Now you can see at the bottom there's also VA. I'm not going to use a VA in this environment, so I'm going to leave that hashed out. Once you've completed, you just need to write the file and quit. We now have the deployment media ready and we also have the files ready to know where to deploy it. The next step is the cluster configuration and this is done in a config.yaml file. I'm going to cover that as a separate video in part two, so please look out for that one on YouTube. Thank you for watching this video on IBM Cloud App Management. Be sure to check out all the other videos in the series.